Hello again and welcome to Ursula's Farmhouse Cooking. And today I'm going to be making a Dutch oven sourdough bread and I found it on Pinterest. I also wanted to show you my wonderful, new to me, it's a beautiful yellow porcelain bowl and I'm gonna call it my new sourdough bowl. Um, I'm just excited because I got it at a thrift store over the weekend and I'm excited to cook with it today to make my bread dough in it, my sourdough. So let's get started. We're gonna be making Dutch oven sourdough. And I can um, also use my razor to make a really pretty shape. This one is gonna be for a friend and her name is Susan. She's been a friend of mine for a long, long time. We used to live in the same neighborhood and I just love Susan to death and I know that she is just loves, loves hearts. She's obsessed with hearts. She finds them in, in, on leaves and she finds them everywhere in nature. And I just thought it would be nice to surprise Susan with a heart loaf. So we're gonna be making an artisan sourdough bread loaf with a heart design. And I'm going to start off by saying, I love King Arthur bread flour. Now, this particular recipe calls for the organic I am out of the organic King Arthur. I'm gonna go for it anyway, cause I don't wanna have to run to the store, but hopefully this will work out. So I'm excited about trying King Arthur again. I'm also gonna use my Annabelle sourdough starter that I made myself and it took about two whole weeks before it was able to, to make bread really rise. So it was a starter that I grew myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using pink Himalayan salt it calls for sea salt, but you could really use basically any, any salt. I'm gonna use um, the pink Himalayan salt, it's healthy salt. I've already got it pre-measured. I have my sourdough starter measured, and I have water measured. It does not say that you have to have filtered water, but I'm going to go ahead and use my bottled water. I usually get Dasani or Callaway water, so, that's my recommendation because a lot of times your water has um, fluoride or even chlorine, you know, for purifying it. So I just didn't want to trust the tap water. So I've already measured my Dasani water. I'm going to go ahead and start now with my, um, my large bowl and I've got my starter. And it should be very thick, kind of like biscuit dough. It's between pancake batter and biscuit dough consistency, if you can see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get every little bit of that out. That is um, 100 grams of my Annabelle sourdough starter. I wanna get all that goodness out, because you don't wanna waste it. This is what's gonna make our bread rise. Sometimes it's kinda hard to get all that sourdough out because it's very sticky-like. Okay, and the next ingredient is your salt. So I'm gonna use pink Himalayan salt, and I'm using 15 grams. Okay, and I know the you can't really see, but so far I just have the starter and the Himalayan salt. Okay, and the next ingredient is the flour, and I need 500 grams of bread flour. Now, uh, as always, I recommend a kitchen scale because you cannot measure 500 grams without it. I'm just gonna put my bowl on the scale. And let's see if I can show y'all my bowl if I move this farther over. Okay, I hope y'all can see the bowl a little bit. Um, I'm gonna raise it up on here so y'all can see it better. Yeah, that's better. I've got it sitting on a on a cutting board now. Okay, that's 503, so I'm gonna take out a little bit. Exactly 500. And I usually just keep a, a measuring cup in there. I keep a, um, I keep like a one-fourth measuring cup in there just as a scooper. 
Now, that's 500 grams of bread flour, and it does call for organic, so mine is not organic. I'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed that it's gonna work out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add my water. So there's only a few ingredients in sourdough bread. Um, so let's just review again. I've got 15 grams of Himalayan pink salt. You can use regular sea salt if you would like to. I've got Dasani water that I measured and it was um, just 300 grams. So it was almost a full bottle of water is what it was. I used my starter, my sourdough starter, and that was 100 grams. And my bread flour, which is supposed to be organic, is King Arthur and it's 500 grams. So let me reach over and get my dough whisk. Okay, here is my dough whisk. Now I can take it off the scale. And I'm gonna use my dough whisk for a little while, but then I'll have to get my hands in it. And um, you might wanna always make sure you take off your rings because it will be hard getting the dough out otherwise. So I'm just gonna mix around and mix around and mix around. And while I'm thinking of it, several people have, have requested that I make some sourdough and show you how I made my sourdough starter, the one I call Annabelle. Well, you can name yours or you don't have to name yours, but it's, it's really a lot of fun making your own sourdough starter. So one of the um, episodes, I will try to do that very soon for y'all. And it does take between one and two weeks for it to, to get um, mature enough so that you can actually make bread and make it rise without using active yeast from the store. And I know a lot of people um, share their starters. So if any, anybody lives close to me, I don't mind sharing with y'all. I just can't put it on YouTube for privacy issues. All right, I'm going to rinse my hands, and if you have if you have damp hands, it makes it really easy to do sourdough. So I'm going to put my wet hands in here and clear off the whisk. Get all that good dough out of there. We don't want to waste it. The loaf I'm making today, this is the very first time I've made it, so we're making it together, so to speak. And um, I just thought, well, this one, this recipe looks great. You know, I'm just trying out a lot of different recipes. That's why I'm calling it my journey. This is my um, sourdough journey with y'all. And some days I'm gonna be making bread. Some days you might see me cleaning my house, you know? I love to clean my house. So that's just me. I like to do a lot of different things. I like to play my piano. One day you might see me playing my piano and singing a song. You never know. But um, for, the, for the most part, my farmhouse um, episodes will be about cooking. Cooking and cleaning and shopping and just fun things like that. And I'm a country girl. I was... I was born and raised in Georgia, and uh, I always lived on a farm. Well, um, 16 years that my husband and I have been married, we didn't live on a farm. We lived in a, in a subdivision then, and um, we had lots and lots of neighbors. Now we actually live, you know, in the middle of a pasture, and um, we really enjoy it. We've been living out here almost 20 years now. Raised our family out here. Okay, so let's see if we've done everything. It says knead the ingredients together until a uniform dough ball forms. Now, like I've said so many in so many other videos, this is a shaggy dough. It's not a smooth dough at first. It's gonna have to ferment for a while before it gets smooth. So it says to use a, using a spray bottle filled with water, mist your clean countertop and wet your hands 
wet the top of the dough ball with a with the spray bottle. So I'm gonna pause my um, camera and get ready for that. Hey, I'm back with you now. So what I just did was I got my um, dough. First of all, I got a little spray mister and I made sure that the countertop was very clean. So I cleaned it with a cleanser first and then I went back over it with plain water. And um, now I've cleaned my bowl. It instructed me to make sure the bowl was very clean because the dough ball will be back in there in a few minutes. So I've also sprayed the dough with water and this is Dasani water. This is not water out of my tap because like I said, it might have chlorine or fluoride and we don't want that in our sourdough. Okay, so it says to turn the dough out onto the wet counter surface and scrape out the bowl and rinse the inside of the bowl really well and leave the bowl wet. The next steps are to stretch and fold the dough. Now y'all have seen me do this before and I'm gonna see if I can angle this down so y'all can see the dough better. Okay, so the countertop is wet, the dough is wet, my hands are damp. I'm gonna make them a little bit damper. I like this little spray bottle. All right, so I'm gonna do my stretch and fold. I'm gonna pull it up until it breaks and bring it back down. I'm gonna rotate it, pull it up till it breaks and fold it down. Rotate. Pull it up and go back down. Pull it up and go back down. All right, and it says to stretch and fold the dough. We just did that. Stretch the top of the dough over the bottom, side over side and bottom over top. And that's what we just did. So you do four little mini stretch and folds. Place the dough back in the bowl with the seam side down and let the dough rest for 30 minutes. So this would be the seam side. So seam side is going down and smooth side is gonna go on the top. Now we're gonna let the dough rest for 30 minutes. And usually I cover the dough. Uh, it doesn't say to cover it, but I'm gonna cover it because that's what we usually do in all the recipes. So I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. And Let's see, I've got some, some new covers. I got some nice bowl covers, so let's see if one of these fits. I hope it fits. Yes, it does. All right, those are for, these are for smaller bowls. So I'm gonna let my um, dough rest for 30 minutes and then I'll be back for the next stretch and fold. So I'll see y'all soon. Don't go far. Hey, we're back. And the first time we just did the very first, um, min, I, I'm calling it a mini stretch and fold, but that didn't count as the first one. So we have, um, we have this one is called stretch and fold one, and it said to use the spray bottle again and spray down your countertop. I can tell that it, it's changing. The dough is starting to ferment, so that's great. Um, so this time it says to clean, you know, your countertop again, mist it with water, wet your hands and wet the top of the dough. Okay. And it says to wet your hands and wet the top of the dough with the spray bottle, turn the dough onto the wet counter surface and scrape out the bowl and rinse the inside of the bowl really well and leave the bowl wet. Now we're gonna stretch and fold the dough. So we're gonna stretch the top of the dough over the bottom. And then I'm gonna rotate it. So it's, it's rising, uh, not rising, but it's uh, stretching up higher this time I can tell. 
I'm rotating it and stretching it, rotating it and stretching it, and only four, four turns. Oh, it's getting a lot of tension in the dough right now. Okay, so that was our stretch and fold number one. So it looks like this now. There's tension in the dough. Now we're going to let the dough rest for two hours. And we're also going to um, spray the bowl with water. Okay. Since it's going to be two hours, I'm also going to put plastic wrap over the bowl and this cover. In the past, I have seen where if you don't cover the dough while it's resting, it will develop a skin over it, so you have to cover it very well. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the plastic wrap and also use this. really get in there. That's a big, big bowl. All right, I'll be back in two hours. Y'all have fun. Hi there. So we are ready for the stretch and fold number two. So I'm going to take the bowl cover off. And I've got the press and seal on there. I've already wet my countertop. I'll wet it again. And I'm going to wet my hands. Make sure they're nice and damp. I'm also gonna wet the top of the dough. And this is what I like to do. Um, let's see if we can get the dough to come out. You're supposed to just let it gently fall. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so this is the second stretch and fold, and we are just going to turn the dough out. And stretch it. Oh, look how pliable that is. Amazing. Since the last one, it's been two hours. There's a lot of tension in there on that side. Okay. So it says stretch and fold the dough, stretch the top of the dough over the bottom, side over side, and bottom over top. Place the dough back in the bowl with the seam side down and let the dough rest for two hours. So I'm gonna put it right back in here and I have sprayed the bowl again. I'm gonna um, use my Pampered Chef scraper and make sure the some of that flour is, is coming out. All right. It's getting very smooth. Can y'all see that? It's no longer a shaggy dough. It's getting really pretty. All right, so I'll cover it back up and we'll let it rest for two more hours. 